Hey, how's it going? My name is Vincent Farina. I'm currently attending Full Sail University, um, pursuing my degree in game design. And the person that I'd like to talk about, my technological pioneer, so to speak, would be Conrad Zeus. Now, Conrad Zeus, um, back you know pre World War II, was a aircraft engineer. Um, he worked for the Heinkel Aircraft Company, and basically his job was to sit there and calculate you know the airflow over these aircraft wings um, back then they didn't have any sort of computer so he basically had to use an adding machine which was a very simplistic machine designed to uh, aid you and doing co you know complex equations um, the problem with these machines is they were they were clunky um, and they were like I said, they were very simplistic. Every detail of the equation had to be added in a manual way. Basically, you had to solve the equation. It was just there to kind of help you out along the way. Um, and it, it took hours and hours to do this work, you know. And basically, Conrad just wanted to find a better way. So that's what he sought out to do. Um, working out of his parents' house, he started trying to, you know, devise some way to essentially program a machine into doing the equation for him. Now, he first thing you need to do is you need to find a way to essentially communicate with the machine. Um, and that's when he found the answer and you know an old nearly forgotten language called binary. I mean, you you ask anyone what binary is nowadays and most can tell you, but back then it wasn't mentioned very much. Um, and it's because of Conrad Zeus that it's so popularized today. Basically, with binary, he was able to communicate with the computer and be able to program it. Um, and for those of you that don't know, binary is essentially ones and zeros. You know, a series of ones and zeros, which can mean different things. Um, so in order to be able to use this and to be able to communicate with the machine, um, he had to build some sort of switchboard um, and at first he tried making mechanical switches he cut out hundreds and hundreds of small metal mechanical switches um, but the problem with the mechanical switches is that they were the same thing as before they were clunky they had to be aligned perfectly like one little hair was out of place and the machine wouldn't function correctly and he knew there had to be a better way um, before he found out that way, he was drafted into the Nazi army, and uh, he worked with them for a little bit, but he eventually came back to his machine, and he figured out how to get around the mechanical switches, and that was by using old electric diodes and telephones. Um, he was able to pull these diodes out, and use them for the machine so basically if the light is on it is a one and if the light was off it was a zero so using these diodes he was able to recreate everything and he was able to actually program the computer now or you know what back then was a computer um, so he programmed it and he put his equation through it and it solved the equation for him um, so that was Z1. That was the first example of an electrical programmable computer. Um, I mean, that that was the founding bricks for for everything that is today. You know, that is modern computing. Without the Z1, we could potentially have nothing. You know, we could still be in the Stone Ages in that regard. Um, so he pretty much influenced everyone. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Conrad Zeus.